Oh, look at that. Holy moly. I don't know how this hive is alive. Hi, and welcome back to the channel today. Well, today we're down in my shop and we are going to do a quick build to help out a fellow beekeeper. Bruce over at Bruce's Bees in Alabama, he released a video a couple of weeks ago where he has a huge infestation in the middle of December. Now, now getting a hive beetle infestation in the summer is bad enough, but in the, in the, in the winter time, the bees, they, they have to keep the queen warm, they have to keep the brood warm, they don't have time to chase all the beetles into a beetle jail so the beetles and bees are kind of co-mingling and that cannot be good for the hive. Um, moreover, if I, if I were a bee, I would want to get out of that hive because it's just creepy. Anyways, so what we're going to do today is we're going to build the Beetle Sucker 5000. I'm going to show you the base components that I have, what you're going to need, how to put it together, and then we're going to get this thing in the mail off to Bruce's bees so that he can alleviate some of the beetle pressure in his hives. So first off, I, I'm gonna, I've got a lot of things sitting here. You're not going to need all of this to build your Beetle Sucker 5000. This is what I'm going to use um, what you are going to need is some sort of a saw. I've got a hacksaw. That's that's what I'm going to use. You can use a hacksaw. Um, you are going to need some sort of tape. I would recommend Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape. Um, I don't have the Gorilla Tape or the Duct Tape here. All I've got is some, some foil backed tape for air conditioning ducts and some black electrical tape. That will work. Any kind of tape that you have will work. Um, I would recommend something rubberized um, because we do have to make an airtight seal with that. Um, I also have some Plasti Dip. You're not going to need this. I do like to put Plasti Dip on the front of mine uh, so that I can make sure that this thing is airtight. Um, anyways, let's go over the components that are in this box and see exactly what this device is. This is just a, a car vac. Let's show you what it is, how it works, and what we're going to need to do to change this from a, a, a car vac to a Beetle Sucker 5000. All right, so if you look at this box, you can see that this vac has a vacuum side and a blower side. The problem is that this nozzle for the blower will not fit on the vacuum side. So what we're going to have to do is modify this in order to accept that. We're just going to tape it on there and then we will have the Beetle Sucker 5000. All of these other attachments, well, you can use them on something else, throw them away, throw them in a drawer. I don't know what you want to do with those. I would probably just throw them away. Um, and then it does come with a couple of filters and a USB-C cable. The filters are both cloth and cloth and metal. Um, you can use whichever one you want. I use the metal one because it can be washed out uh, and any USB-C cable will work with your phone charger to charge this thing up. It does have a very good battery life and I can generally do with the entire apiary on one charge. All right, so this vacuum comes from Saker. This thing, the base model here, cost me about $45. I'll, sh I'll share the link on Amazon below. I'll put the price on the screen uh, that I paid for it and the link. It's about a $45 purchase. Um, this does have two speeds. Again, it is rechargeable and uh, it gives you everything you need in order to make this device. Let's go ahead and get it opened up. Not gonna need this. Actually, I have had some suggestions that we should make a holster. Maybe I can make a holster out of that. I don't know. All right, we are not going to need this. We are not going to need this. We are going to need this or this. I don't know which one we're gonna use yet. We're certainly going to need this. We will hold on to that. We will not need this. And we will need this. This is the uh, metal filter. Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. And don't need this. And we certainly don't need that. Okay, so they've changed things up a bit. They don't. They didn't give me the same tools that I had. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to use this one. So that's the one you want. It's got a nice little hole in it. We're just going to cut the very top of that off. We'll do that first. Now if you notice there's a little, I don't know whether you can see it here, there's a little door in there. We want to leave that intact. We just want to cut the very end off of this thing. Just this part right here. I 
All right, so I've mostly flattened that. I just cut it off straight across. You can do that with your hacksaw. Just have to make sure that you leave this inner, this, there's like a tube in there. You have to leave that intact because it's got the trap door on it. You don't want the beetles coming back out of there. But that's it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to affix this to the front with some tape. Okay, the goal is to make this airtight around that nozzle. I'm just going to put some uh, some tape right there. Now again, you can use Gorilla Tape. I'm just using this foil back tape because that's all I've got. Now we just want to open up our hole. There we go. All right, this is where you should be. Very easy to do. You just want to make sure to plug up all the holes except for that main hole going in. I've got it closed up nice and tight. So now what we need to do is tape this right to there. All right, so what I will do is I'll just make some strips of tape If you're using duct tape or Gorilla Tape, you can probably just tear it off. I have to use scissors because this is foil-backed tape. It's all I got. I'm going to put one piece actually right on this side and one piece right on this side. And the reason why is because I need an airtight seal around the front of that thing so a smaller square would be better. Notice how this covers it up now. I don't know whether you can see that. Alright, well that's got a little bit of a little bit of a nice bend on it there, but maybe that'll help him get in there so you can see over the end of it there. It is what it is. So now we're gonna take some black tape. Again, you can use your gorilla tape. We're gonna tape this thing up. And try to make it look pretty. We'll start right about here. Right. All right, now that is affixed. So what we have essentially here is a Beetle Sucker 5000. But we're going to take it one step further. I'm going to use some Plasti Dip here. Just because, why not? And I think what I'm going to do before I do this some gloves on. Be beautiful. All right, so now all I have to do is let the Plasti Dip dry and then uh, we will clean out the tip of it and we will have a Beetle Sucker 5000. Now I told you there really wasn't much to this, but this is a fantastic way to eliminate hive beetles from your hive. Um, this is the most effective method that I have found it works really, really well for me. I actually went through the entire bee castle yard and the entire home yard uh, in two days time and got rid of every single hive beetle in these hives uh, before winter set in. Uh, and that was huge because if you have been watching my videos, you know the day that I released the Beetle Sucker 5000, when we went into that hive, 
Oh, look at that. Holy moly. It was it was a nightmare. I mean, there must have been 100,000 beetles in there. Actually, I think we counted there were several thousand beetles in that hive, and we actually put a, a tally up at the end of the, the episode. But we caught them all, and we really saved hive number 20 over the bee castle yard. And I think that this Beetle Sucker 5000 is going to work wonders for Bruce over at Bruce's Bees, and I think it's actually going to solve his problem as well. All right, well, there you go, the end of another adventure. Now, we did manage to get the Beetle Sucker 5000 built, and this Beetle Sucker 5000 is going to go off to Bruce's Bees in Alabama. Um, he had a massive hive infestation in December. That's not something that any of us want to deal with. It's something that I've never seen before, so I know that it's probably stressing him out and probably stressing out his bees. Well, I can tell you that the Beetle Sucker 5000 is up to the task. It can get rid of the beetle pressure in that hive. Um, I know this from experience because <laughs> I had a serious hive infestation myself this year and the Beetle Sucker 5000 helped get me out of it as well. Now it kind of looks like a gimmick but I promise you this thing will work. Um, overall it's a very simple build. You can get by with a hacksaw, the base product, um, whichever base product you choose. There's multiple ones out there, but this is the one that I chose. I'll leave the link down below. But you can get by with a hacksaw, some electrical tape, and some Plasti Dip if you have it. You don't have to use the Plasti Dip. You just have to make sure that you can you create an airtight seal up here in the end um, so that you can maintain a vacuum. Uh, also, the only other thing you have to make sure is that you have a hole small enough for a beetle, but not large enough for a bee. Now, I have had a couple of bees get sucked through this hole in mine, and it's basically the size of a BB. And if that happens, you can let the bee out. They, they've been un, unharmed. I've not had any bees get killed going through this thing, but I have captured a couple of them in there because they just fly everywhere when you're getting the beetles out of the hive. But if you have one, get on there. You just push them through the rest of the way or scrape them off and continue about your work. If you have to sacrifice a few bees to get rid of a few thousand beetles, I think you're probably willing to make that sacrifice. I know I am. Anyways, with all of that said, uh, I want to thank... Bruce for letting me make this for him. I'm going to ship this off to him. If you have not been to his channel, go to Bruce's Bees. You can find that here on YouTube. I'll leave a link down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you like his content. I'm sure you will if you like beekeeping content. And as for me, if you have not uh, uh, been to this channel before, I hope that you leave me a like, comment, and a subscribe. That would really help me out. It helps all of us creators out when you engage with the channel, so I would appreciate it if you would engage. I do everything I can to engage with you. Please engage back, and we'll try to keep making more videos for you. With all of that said, I want you to be happy, and I will see you next week. Take care.